Boxing Truth here. Wanted to talk a little bit about Felix Verdejo, Puerto Rico's uh, new up and coming fighter, regarded by many in the island as perhaps the, the next Tito Trinidad, the next great fighter being produced out of the island of Puerto Rico. However, he's coming off another disappointing showing on the HBO platform. Underwhelming performance against William Silva. Surprising because stylistically I thought Verdejo can do some things against Silva. Perhaps get another highlight reel knockout that he's produced in, in the past against obscure opposition. Not the best available competition, but he's being he's in the development process. Top rank is building him up in order to... You know, and also build his fan base. He's got a solid fan base on the East Coast. It was a sellout at the theater. He wasn't the only reason why that the theater sold out. Terrence Crawford uh, brought some fans over from, from Omaha. He has a solid fan base as well. Sean Monaghan was on the undercard. A lot of people came to watch him fight. He's a ticket seller in the New York area. But Verdejo has a solid fan base in the East Coast. However, this is the second underwhelming performance he's had on HBO. A lot of, a lot of high hopes for Verdejo, for his from his fans and also from Bob Arum, his promoter of Top Rank. Bob Arum uh, has a lot of high hopes for Verdejo. Believes he can be a, a major star, the next uh, big big superstar in boxing. He definitely has the, the tools, the skill set to do it. He has the smile, uh, the marketing smile, th that to make it happen. He had a I've been watching Verde Hill ever since his since the amateurs. He he looked very one of the best fighters from the Olympics. He gave Lomachenko a competitive fight during that Olympic run. Lomachenko's Olympic run in 2012. There were there was guys that couldn't even compete with him. They got schooled. Look looked very silly. But Verde Hill held his own against Lomachenko. Gave him his tough one of the, uh, Lomachenko's tougher fights in the amateur ranks. Did very well. Competed very well. Had a good showing in his Olympic run, and he's had a some good showings as a professional. He's has scored some highlight reel knockouts. He's a very good boxer puncher type, skilled. He's he's a good counter puncher. Can counter you with the left hand, with his left hook, with his right hand. He he has a good good fundamentals, good technique, very textbook. However, in his uh, showcases on HBO he just hasn't delivered it's been disappointing he if you're gonna be the next big thing in boxing the next major star and top rank is definitely pushing that he's got to he's got to do some special things he's got to knock out the, the Ivan Nahadas and the William Silvers of the world these guys are not world beaters they were prospects untested just like Verdejo is Verdejo dominated them showed some flashes in the fight against Nadaha but it was just, it was a, it was a dull performance against Silva, and and it's not like Silva presented any issues from, for uh, Verdejo to not able to produce that type of performance. Silva didn't let his hands go. He was he was right in front of Verdejo. He stood in front of him. He was he had a high guard. It's difficult, yes, with fighters with high guards, but there's there are ways to exploit that defense. Verdejo should have fainted more and went to the body. His body was Silva's body was wide open. Silva, there was plenty of opportunities. There was plenty of opportunities for Verdejo to go around the guard with his overhand right, because Silva was wide open for to be to be able to punch around his guard. It's just that Verdejo just didn't take enough chances. He just there were times that he would explode, but very very few and far far between. He's capable of. of of being explosive and throwing some some lights light up lights out punches and, and good combinations and and when he when he explodes he looks very good but he only does it in spurts didn't do it much at all against Silva and and right now might have might have to pump the brakes on him being the next Tito Trinidad because right now I don't see it um I don't see it right now that he can be the next Trinidad Trinidad was special. Trinidad at this stage of Verdejo's career has already surpassed him. Tito Trinidad was a world champion at, at the age of 20 years old. Verdejo's going to be 24 or 23 this year. 
He's still very young, but Trinidad has already surpassed him. Trinidad had been a world champion already three, four years into it by the time uh, Verdejo was at his age. I think Trinidad won his first world title in his 17th or 18th pro fight. And he took some dangerous fights along the way. I mean, he fought undefeated Yuri Boy Campus, who was 56-0, and 51 knockouts coming into the fight, got knocked down and ended up destroying Yuri Boy Campus after getting knocked down. Trinidad took uh, dangerous fights with an undefeated Obacar, beat some Hall of Famers like Hector Camacho, naturally smaller guy, yes, but was still a top-level fighter at the time. Pernell Whitaker's, the um, other fights that 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 he had that made him the star that he was, and he had a lot of a lot of defenses, and he had a lot of spectac spectacular performances, just like the one he had against Maurice Blo Blo Blocker in his very first world title shot. I mean, he absolutely left no doubt, destroyed him with precision punching, destroyed Maurice Blocker in two rounds. And he kept doing that and doing that, and a lot of his performances and, de and title defenses at welterweight. It was, he was one of the most exciting fighters to watch. And Verdejo can have has, has that that ability to to have those type of performances. He can really explode at times. Drills very good punches and left hooks. Showed showed that in the in the fight against Nadaha, but he hurt his hand. He had a down year in 2015. Was limited in his um. Uh, output of fights he could produce. Top rank wants to make up for the lost year in 2015 and get him very busy for 2016. They want to uh, put him out there for five fights at least. He already has two fights scheduled even before the fight with Silva so it, it was pretty much a given that Rodeo was going to get past this assignment but it was disappointing. He underwhelmed. Didn't wow any fans. I haven't been wowed by Verdejo. Not against the 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 opponents where he's where it's it's a slight step up he's fighting an undefeated guy instead of fighting uh fighters with not that much confidence coming in he's got another date in april i'm hearing it's going to be on unamas the network that top rank uses to develop their prospects i'm not expecting a world beater though but i'm really not i don't expect a a a much of a step up or perhaps the same level of silva who wasn't a, t a top ranked or nothing like that. And then he'll come back on, if he gets past that assignment in April, or most likely he will. Don't don't see top ranked matching him, anybody that could possibly beat him. But once he does, he'll, they'll put him back in June on the, the, the eve of Puerto Rican Day Parade. Maybe perhaps uh, we'll double up with, with Crawford again. Crawford most likely... Looks like he will fight Pravonikov. I mean, it looks it's logical that that fight will happen, but maybe um, Verdejo will be his in his first step of fight in in the summer his, in the summer showdown in New York when he comes back there. And I already know what top rank plans are for him. They're gonna do what they usually do with with some of their star their previous star fighters in the past. They're gonna take on the most beatable champion in, in the lightweight in the lightweight division where Verdejo is campaigning at. Right now, he uh, Verdejo is very highly ranked in the WBO in the lightweight division. He is rated number three. Terry Flanagan is the current champion from the UK who has a fight up coming up with Derry Matthews. He probably will beat him again. And Terry Flanagan is a beatable fighter. Nothing really special about him. He's a big lightweight, five nine and a half. Um, not much power. He did knock out the average Diego Magdaleno, but Magdaleno was nothing special. I just see it's definitely going to be in the cards in the future. Verdejo picking up a strap at lightweight, but he's not going to be fighting the best available or the most highly regarded champion in the lightweight division. There's still a lot of um uh. A lot of pieces to put together in lightweight division. There's multiple champions in the division. Right now, Barfelemy has the highest claim as being the, 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 the guy, the best guy in the division. I, I can't dispute that because, he, to me, he beat the most formidable opponent for his strap. He beat uh, Shagakov, who is a pretty damn good fighter. It was a very good close fight. 
could have went either way. And uh, Shagakov was dominating before the cut. Anyways, back to Verdejo. Tile Ring has done this numerous times before. They did it with Floyd Mayweather. They did it with Oscar De La Hoya. They, they're doing it with Terrence Crawford right now. Matching them, up, matching them with the most beatable champions in their di respective divisions. Verdejo is not going to be any different. He most likely will fight Terry Flanagan for his first title shot. Flanagan is beatable. Southpaw, not very fast, not very athletic. Verdejo is a better, better boxer, more skilled, better counterpuncher. They're around the same size and height. It'll be a good fight for Verdejo. Who knows who he'll fight next? Maybe he'll fight. Maybe Ricky Burns is in his future. I mean, there's, there are better opponents out there that he could fight. Michael Perez would be nice. Peter Petrov to get him ready. A Dodd Jordan, I wouldn't mind. Sharif Bogari, he hasn't been active though. The lightweight division has some fighters that can really test out Verdejo. I, I would like to see Verdejo fight a Petrov or a Michael Perez. Those guys, uh, rather than a Ricky Burns, because Ricky Burns is a, uh, he's looked faded to me. Anyways, he didn't look good against uh, Figueroa. Uh, uh, no, nah, I, I didn't. He didn't look good in that fight, really. But Verdejo, he needs to needs to do better in his next performance. Disappointing. I wouldn't say he's the next Tito just yet, because uh, Tito. I was wild by Tito in a lot of his performances, and right now, and Verdejo hasn't really delivered that. He's he's had some good knockouts, but against. In the more high-level profile fights, in the fights where he's really going to be un under the spotlight, he needs to deliver those type of performances. Y'all let me know what y'all think about his career. This is Boxing Truth. I'm out.